Michael Graham. I am one of the pastors of the Village Church in Hamilton, Ohio. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in to another installment of the Village Church Q&A, where you guys ask questions about uh, a specific sermon or focal text that the sermon was about, and we will give you uh, answers to the best of our ability. So today I'm going to be answering two questions that come from this passage in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And, and I'm not going to read that, but essentially what that passage does is it sets up the qualifications for overseers. And uh, the word overseer is another name for, for elder or pastor, that is, uh, those that lead the church. So, so the first question uh, has to do with this. In the sermon, we talked about how the standards for pastors, and specifically in this passage, are really... This, the call and the standards for all of us, uh, all disciples, uh, it's just the weight of that call is a little different. And so the question is this, how can such high standards help us become more like Jesus, excuse me, rather than kind of inflating us or deflating us by our success or by our, our failure? So it's a great question. And... Uh, and here's my stab at kind of an answer. So the, the first thing is this, that pride comes from self-dependency. And what I mean by that is, is pride, uh, we are puffed up with pride when we are dependent upon our own success and our own performance that's, that's within us. And, and the other ditch uh, is, is despair. And despair comes from self-despairing. And that, that means uh, when we fail, when we fail to live up to the expectation that God has for us, then it leads us to the ditch of, of despair. And so, kind of the way that we contend or the way that we battle with those thoughts are, are this. The truth that you are not your own. If you're a disciple in Jesus, you're not your own. Uh, that must be understood and it must ring out in us. Like passages that l like, uh, he must increase but I must decrease. And, and what those things point out to us are that our I identity isn't self-anything. It's not self-dependent and it's not self-despairing. Uh, our identity is, is what we are secured in the work of Jesus. So rather than our performance, that is how well we do or how, how poorly we do, um, rather than our performance building kind of our identity, our worth or our value, it's really just the opposite. It is our identity that builds our performance. So because of, of who, who we are and because of whose we are, we get to join God in, in works that He created for us before the foundation of the world. And that is, that's slightly different and a little more liberating for us. When we look at these standards and they just seem so weighty, we get to rest in understanding that the call for all disciples uh, is to be above reproach because we are the reformed image of God. But the reality is that, that we can rest freely knowing that Jesus secures our success. That is the essence of the gospel. So in that way, our obedience to be above reproach or to be any of these things is really just the fruit of believing our identity um, is already secured in the perfect life, uh, the death, in the resurrection to new life of Jesus Christ. So, so that being the case, we get to trust the performance of Jesus rather than being solely dependent upon ourselves. We get to trust the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit gives us gifts to live in a way that honors and glorifies Jesus. And we get to to rest in the grace of God to love us in spite of our failures, to love us in spite of our success. 
So the result is, and kind of the, the outworking of this, is that we get to repent and believe uh, and repeat that over and over again. And so what we have to do is understand that God doesn't love us more. He doesn't love us less because of, of what we do right or because of what we do wrong when we put our whole trust in Jesus. And so what, what pastors and what all disciples get to do is grow in preaching that the truth of that gospel to ourselves daily. So the standard for, for leaders must be high. The standard for all disciples who are made in the image of God must be high. But grace must be uh, full and present always. So the second question is real specific. And it's, and it's relating to verse 7. Um, how does verse 7 play out? And what, what is verse... Seven really getting at. So let me just read that to you from the Bible. Uh, verse 7 says, Moreover, remember it's talking about the qualifications of, of a pastor. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Kind of in short, uh, I think the question is having to do with what does that mean that that he would fall into disgrace uh, if he's not respected uh, or thought well of by outsiders. Here, here's the deal: the church is the visible expression of God's kingdom, especially to those outside of God's kingdom. Unfortunately, we don't have Jesus walking around in the flesh to be perfect. Uh, so that those outside would look at him and and see the the true and genuine image of God in in the flesh, and so the best that we have on earth is this broken image that God is redeeming. He's redeeming the church to ultimately be His people, uh, and and one day His kingdom will be established in perfection. But but that hasn't happened yet. So. Let me let me give you an analogy. If a husband abuses his wife, and a husband is to be the leader of, of, of that marriage or the, the leader of that home, what can happen is, is the image of that abuse can discredit marriage for some. And so, so for some who aren't married or, or those on the outside might look at that and say, see, you know, that's why marriage uh, is a failure. And... and because God is the author of marriage, people can even look at that and say, see, God, God uh, has no character uh, that He would allow the, the leader of the home to be abusive. And so that's, that's where a husband would fail to embody Christ to his wife. Likewise, because Jesus doesn't walk around in the flesh, when a pastor fails in respect to those outside of the church, it can mar God's image. Uh, that is, God's image can be disgraced because of, of the way uh, a pastor fails to be respected by, by those outside of the church. So, uh, certainly there's a lot more there. Uh, I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for your questions, and feel free to tune in next week for a Village Q&A relating to the qualifications for deacons. Uh, thanks. Grace and peace be with you.